If escaping the British climate could dramatically improve your health, you'd hardly think twice about leaving. But when your partner's worked hard to build a life for your family in the UK, how do you persuade them it's worth risking everything to move to a country you've never even been to on the other side of the world? Two near-death experiences have cheated Nazim Munga of the life he once knew. He can no longer work, um, he no longer drives. Most days it's the same four walls, day in, day out. Missing out on family life, he's convinced relocating down under could help him become the dad he's desperate to be. The dream for me is that we'll move out to Australia and I'll get substantially better. While a trial week in the country does work wonders... It's a complete different change for him, because in the UK, all what he does is be in the house. Will the financial cost of a move mean the dream's over before it's begun? That's quite a big shock. Not happy. Not happy at all. than 200 nationalities, Australia boasts a vibrant multicultural society. And with the promise of an easy-going outdoor lifestyle, it's no wonder the country remains an irresistible pull for Brits, seeking a better life down under. Not everyone stays for good, however. Almost half of those who emigrate end up returning home. A horrific car crash eight years ago left Nazim Munga a shadow of the parent and partner he wants to be. Now, despite never having been, he believes Australia's warmer climate could turn his life around. The coming week will be a chance to find out if Nazim's grand plan is simply a pipe dream or if moving to the southern hemisphere really could give the Mungas the normal family life they crave. To get from Manchester to Brisbane, the Mungas have spent a gruelling 22 and a half hours on a plane. When they finally arrive for the first time, the distance from the UK has hit home with Joanne. My biggest concern is um, family coming to see us, my parents especially. They're not used to doing long haul flights and I think um, they would really struggle with it. The long journey's given Nazim plenty of thinking time. Quite a bit apprehensive to sort of find out where we're going to be in the future. Hopefully, Australia will meet all our expectations and this will be where we sort of settle down as a family. There's a lot hanging in the balance in the week ahead. It's got to massively deliver for me and the world that needs convincing. Yeah. I want to have the nice house, I want to be in the nice area and I want the right job as well. I've worked really hard to where I've got to in the UK so far. It's got to deliver, definitely. Otherwise, I'm not going to come at all. Joanne set the bar high. The next seven days will have to impress if Nazim's to get the fresh start he desperately wants. Meet the Munger family. Dad Nazim, Mum Joanne, five-year-old Katie and Tom, who's three. They live just outside Leeds in West Yorkshire. Nazim and Joanne tied the knot nine years ago, but just one year later, their lives were thrown into turmoil. I was on a night shift at work and Nazim was at home and I got a phone call to say that he was in A&E because we'd had a house fire. An electrical fault had set the house ablaze with Nazim inside. Talking about it now, I can feel the heat on my skin. Apparently the flames were literally chasing him out of the door. I could have died in it. It was a devastating time for the couple and things were about to get much worse when two weeks later, Nazim was involved in a near fatal car accident. I was stationary at some red lights and a very large car hit me from behind at speed. Fighting for his life, Nazim had to be cut from the car. When I went to A&E, he was attached to all drips and monitors, he was on a spinal board, there was loads of doctors and nurses around them. It was, it was really shocking to see. The pair struggled to comprehend their misfortune. How can this happen to us? We've just lost our house and I potentially have lost my ability to walk. It was that that serious. It was as if our world was ending, really. Nazim's injuries were life-changing, but against the odds, the couple began to rebuild their lives. And eight years on, the Mungas are a family of four. Do, do you know what, um, uh, what yeah. um, have to have pink and white? 
But Nazim still struggles with everyday living. Having chronic fatigue syndrome and having chronic pain. On a bad day, I can't make a cup of tea because I can't figure out the order to make a cup of tea in. He can no longer work, um, he no longer drives. Most days it's the same four walls, day in, day out. Frustrated at needing constant medication, Nazim fears he's missing out on family life. Taking more painkillers causes more fatigue. If you're sleeping 18 hours a day, you are sleeping your whole life away. Having cheated death already, he's determined not to let life beat him. You need to move on. You need to achieve something past that. Although he's never been, Nazim's now convinced moving to the other side of the world could help him claim back the life he wants. I see Australia as a potential place where I can get better in myself and come off painkillers. Family holidays abroad have fueled Nazim's belief that a life in the sunshine is the tonic he needs. When it's cold and wet in England, I get a lot more pain, whereas when we travel out to a warm country, I'm able to do and achieve a lot more and I get significantly less pain. By moving to Australia, we'll be able to get um, his life back and he'll be able to interact more as a family, we'll be able to do more as a family. So it's a huge dream for him. Ultimately, Nazim's goal is to be more hands-on with Katie and Tom. It's really heartbreaking when the children want to play with you and you have to say to them, actually, no, I can't play with you today because I'm in too much pain. I'd love to be able to do that. At the moment, it's not achievable, but in Australia, it should be. Nurse Joanne understands what a move could mean for them, but as the family's sole breadwinner, the decision to start again in a country they've never visited can't be taken lightly. There's a massive amount of pressure on me. What if the jobs are not there? What if the houses are terrible? And I wouldn't want to give up on everything that we've achieved in England to, um, to move to Australia to do it if it's not going to be there. She's also worried about cutting off the strong family support network they have in the UK. Can you start my iPad out again, please? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be away from everybody that could potentially help us. Are you hungry, sweetheart? Yeah. To think that we're going to be out there doing it all by ourselves is, is really difficult. The next seven days will be the chance to find out if Nazim's right, as the couple decide once and for all what side of the world their future lies. I think if we're not in agreement, somebody's going to be really disappointed. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's not Nazim, because I think he's been through enough, but I'm not going to commit to something that's going to be worse off for us as a family. I'm pinning everything on this dream. For me, it literally is, and everything. It's a new chance at it's life. A new chance at life. For their trial week down under, the Mungas are visiting Queensland on the East Coast. Also known as the Sunshine State, it should be the perfect base for Nazim. The final leg of their journey takes them to the suburb of Broad Beach on the Gold Coast. What will they make of their first taste of Australian living? Wow. It's a lake. This looks very nice. Wow. Wow, this is a nice entrance hall. It's huge. Oh, it's a lot bigger than what I thought. It's a positive start. Look out the back. <laughs> Katie. The house backs on to a lake. I think that's better than a swim pool. It's nice, I like this terrace thing as well. Nazim's already picturing himself at home here. You can imagine having breakfast outside. Breakfast every day. Back indoors, the positivity continues. Wow, it is really nice. <gasps> Look at this dining room. This house needs it's nice and open sure. plan, I like that. She's only been here a few hours, but it looks like Joanne could be one over easier than she thought. Look That's at that amazing, view. Oh, I could definitely see myself waking up every morning looking at that view. Just what Nazim was hoping to hear. If this is what homes are like, I absolutely love them. Yeah. Nice open plan, nice big garden. So far, I'm feeling positive. Back in the UK, the Mungas live in a four-bedroom detached house near Leeds. It's the same house which caught fire eight years ago. The property has been completely renovated but the memories haven't gone away. It's a lovely house, the area is lovely, but I've got no emotional attachment anymore. The couple's budget for a home in Australia is £250,000. 
we want family space. I'd love a really, really big open plan um, kitchen, dining room and lounge. I live in the kitchen, so being able to see the kids just playing with the toys. For me, storage is something that we desperately need. A nice single storey house where we're all on one level. Unfortunately, there's been about four occurrences on the stairs where I have fallen down the stairs. I think swimming pools are a dream, but yeah. I think grass for the kids or some open space where they can just vent and let off some steam. Big requirement for us is obviously being within a maximum of four to five minutes drive to a place of work for Joanne. We don't want to move to Australia and we see even less of her than we do now. To give an idea of what's available on the Gold Coast property market, we've arranged for the couple to view three properties, two close to budget and a third which should be everything they're looking for in a dream home. With the children looked after by a childminder, Joanne and Nazim begin the search. First stop is a suburb of Ashmore. With plenty of schools and parks on the doorstep, it's a family-friendly area and with a brand new teaching hospital nearby, it could be the perfect spot for Nurse Joanne. Will this spacious four-bedroom home fulfill the Munger's needs? What do you think? Interesting. Interesting. That's the most Steps. With his restricted mobility, Nazim could have hit a stumbling block already. Hang on. Don't like this bit. Let's hope things improve inside. Wow, this is nice. That's more like it. But it's really dark. Feels really small. I like the wooden floor. That's nice. Well, that's something. It just feels a bit claustrophobic. Yeah, quite hemmed in. Yeah. Feeling closed in is the last thing Nazim needs, and things go from bad to worse. Oh, that kitchen's horrendous. <laughs> yeah, the kitchen is quite hideous. We couldn't live in a kitchen like that. The family bathroom perks Joanne up. Oh, I like this. It's a bathroom. No, it's nice, it's clean, it's modern. Nazim's not convinced, though. It's only a half-size bath in here. It'd be better if it was a single cubicle for me to get in and out of. But I think this is the family bathroom, so... Fingers crossed for an ensuite. <laughs> Things look promising in the bedrooms. Wow, this is nice. Now, now all that foliage has gone from outside. It's actually really bright in really, here. Really, really bright. It's got the storage space they want. You've got the wardrobes, you just literally need the bed, and it's getting better and better as we go towards this end. The master bedroom's modern and spacious. Wow. This is amazing. Oh, I love this. Walking wardrobe, that's what you want. That's my dream. Yep, I think I could fill this. <laughs> and Nazim's happier with the shower. That's really good access for me. Unfortunately, though, it's not long before Nazim's energy takes a dive. Went dizzy. Oh, OK. It's a reminder of why this move could be so important for him. Right, get your bearings. Rallying round, Nazim's impressed with the garden. Looks amazing. Absolutely. No, I can't. I'm overwhelmed, but the kids would love it as well. It's not a swimming pool, but it's halfway there. Yeah. Although access would have to be rethought. You could obviously move it and then ramp it over that way. Yeah. Despite earlier misgivings, the couple have warmed to this property. As I've gone through the house, it seems really, really nice. I like it. The master bedroom's amazing. I could definitely see myself there. The kitchen is the biggest letdown for me. Yeah. I was expecting a bit bigger. For me, I'd, this room I'd probably redesign completely. That's a lot of work, though, isn't it? It's a lot of work. So, with £250,000 to spend, is it somewhere they could afford to call home? So how much do you think it is, then? Um, I think I'll go with probably two, three, five. I think it's going to be a bit higher than that. So I think it's probably, like, towards the top end of our budget, about two, four, five, two, fifty. Shall we have a look, then? Yeah. Wow. Whoa. That's £65,000 over budget. Well over our budget. I'm really disappointed. I thought that would be worth a lot less than that. For the work that needs to in the house to meet our needs, I don't think it's worth it. It's a disappointing start, 
Hopefully, the next place will be more affordable. It's situated in Narang, just 30 minutes from Surfers Paradise and close to the motorway for access to Brisbane, the suburb is popular with young families. Will this modern three-bedroom property be the Munger's idea of a perfect Aussie home? You don't want to come down this in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, we don't have that here. That is a really steep driveway. Thumbs up for the area, though. It seems a really quiet street, really nice, yeah. I love it already. Bit concerned about the driveway, but I'm sure we've got a railing in there. That'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> well, this is nice. It's open plan. It's really light. It's airy. There's a nice outside feel about the house. Yeah, that's yeah. what we want. First impressions are good, and the kitchen's more suited to their needs. I've got the workspace, that's what you need. And I'm also in the lounge with the kids. So much better than the last house. Yeah, yeah. And this kitchen, I mean, it's handmade, it's amazing. But Joanne's not as enthusiastic about the bedrooms. Again, it's been small. Yeah. It's a bit dark. So trimming on the trees and um, that light, light straight in. Nazim's staying positive and spotting a fitted wardrobe wins Joanne over. Whoa. This is nice. This is bigger than I thought. Nice. Yeah, it goes all the way to the back, so you need a bed in this room and the kids can have a, loads of playroom. The master bedroom leads to a difference of opinion. I love the red walls in this room. No, I hate them. It's a nice room. It's a nice size. Yeah. Needs a bit of decoration. Oh, that, that's nice as well. A yeah. nice big walk-in wardrobe. You've got loads of extra room now. Yeah, it's obviously not as impressive as the last house, but it's a good size. For, at the end of the day, it's a bedroom. The ensuite's got an unusual layout. Ooh, I like this. Cos all the way through. So it's like part ensuite, part family bath. Elsewhere, Joanne and Nazim find a room with plenty of potential. It's a bit of an odd shape. Oh, this is like a, another bedroom. Oh, this could be like when our family come to visit. Yeah. It's perfect for them, isn't it? It just needs a bit of a freshener. An undercover entertaining area could be ideal for guests as well. Wow, this is nice. It's like an extra room. The garden falls short on space for Katie and Tom. It's quite small. It's not as much running around space. But this property is full of surprises. <gasps> wow. I'm in love with this house. <laughs> I think this makes up for definitely not having a garden. Yeah. Look at that. That's an amazing pool. Perfect. Kids will be very happy with that. Yeah. And it's not just the children who would benefit from a pool. Help strengthen my back muscles up. One thing we want from Australia is a healthy outside lifestyle, and this 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 yeah. gets this. This has exceeded expectations, definitely. It's exactly what we're looking for. Yeah. This property may help convince Joanne to move halfway around the world, but is it somewhere they can afford on their two hundred and fifty thousand pounds budget? I think I'm going to go for three hundred and fifty. So I'm going to say two seventy. That's £10,000 under budget. That was well over. I'm really surprised at the price, but it's actually it's a really, really nice surprise. I think I'll be ready to move tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Things are going well for Nazim, and there's still one house to see. It's in Maudsland. This suburb has the country living feel the family are after, and good transport links make it accessible for commuting. We believe this modern three-bedroom family home could be the dream house, but will it have the wow factor for Nazim and Joanne? Here it is on the right. Wow, it looks really nice. Wow. Love the street as well. It's nice and quiet. It looks like a really, yeah. The positivity continues inside. Wow, this looks nice. Love this entrance hall. I like the door as well. It's nice. This is amazing. It's a lovely kitchen. I love it. It's really nice and open plan. I can see myself cooking here. I can see myself watching the kids play. It's just perfect for me. I really, really, really like it. It's a house ready to move into. Yeah. I want to move now. Yeah. The outside area's a winner too. Wow. I can see ourselves here cooking on the barbecue outside. I can see you cooking on the barbecue yeah. outside. The kitchen's my domain, the barbecue's your domain. The alfresco feel is just what they're looking for. Standing here, we can see everything inside yeah. and everything's outside. It's just, it's just absolutely beautiful. And the huge garage inspires them both. Wow. This is a really good space. You can easily turn it into a kid's playroom. Oh, another room? 
definitely another room. Moving on, the upbeat mood continues. Wow. Oh, this is impressive. I like this. It's just so modern, so yeah. new. And it's a wet room as yeah. well. Especially having kids around. Yeah. The master bedroom's got all the space they need. Mm. Wow. This is impressive. But the proximity to the road could present a problem. This truck just gone past, so... Work and night shifts, really important. Um, have a, a cool, quiet bedroom away from the road, and it is a little bit noisy. But moving outside, their spirits soon soar. Wow. wow. That is beautiful. The large garden offers plenty of room for the children to play and appalls the icing on the cake. This is the best outside space we've had. And it's flat, it's all on one surface for you, so you can get around really easily. Yeah. Got no adaptions that we need to make. So you can just walk straight in. Yeah. I think us and the kids will be really happy here. Yeah. It's the dream house. All Joanne and Azim need to know now is how much it would cost. Their budget is £250,000. So how much do you think it's worth, then? I think it might be sort of top-end or higher than what our budget is. I'm afraid to look, cos I, I just like it too much. Um, I'm generally really, really nervous about this one. Yeah. Cos I think this is our house. I think I'm probably going again at 350. I think it's probably about 300, 310. Let's do it. It's £13,000 over budget, but... Oh. That's impressive. It generally feels, like, achievable. It's, it's a bit of reaching distance. Looks like Joanne's won over. I mean, this is moving me towards Australia, definitely. So much for our money. It's unbelievable. I think this is definitely for, sort of, for us. Definitely. Their day exploring Gold Coast properties has given Joanne and Nazim a real insight into what their money might buy in Australia. Property number one's outdoor spa hit the spot, but indoors was on the gloomy side and so was the price. The second house was perfect for outdoor living and £10,000 under budget, the couple felt it could be a home from home. But the third property was the dream house and although over budget, could be worth stretching the purse strings for. So when it comes to homes down under, will it be the UK or Australia? Based on the properties we've seen today, we decided to vote for... Australia. Australia. This house, it's just perfect. It really is perfect. I think it's going to be amazing for us here. We can see we can get a lot better houses for our money out here than we can in the UK, so I think this is definitely the place for us. And just sat out here, I just feel so happy, just sat in this garden. Discovering a house that could help improve Nazim's life is all very well. But as the sole owner, Joanne knows the pressure's now on her to get a job with a decent salary if they're ever to afford it. Back home, she's a sister in an intensive care unit in Leeds. It's a job she's passionate about. I absolutely adore my job. Seeing that appreciation some, in a, like a relative space or a patient space to say we've actually done a good job there and we've actually helped them through a difficult situation, it is really rewarding. But working long shifts means little time for family. It is a fine juggling act. I'm stressed a lot of the time. I feel like I've missed out on loads. Despite the hours, finding similar work in Australia will be key if Joanne's ever to agree to a move. I've worked really hard to get to the position where I'm at. I want to continue to learn in my job. I don't want to be stuck in a row. I want to try new things. With just one wage coming in, she's got a lot on her plate. I've got to go out and make the money because Nazim can't. The job needs to be there. We want to be able to have a, a nice and a good lifestyle. I don't want to be skimping and saving. I want to actually enjoy my life out there. And if we can't do that, there's no, there's no real point leaving. As Joanne sets out to explore what the future might hold work-wise in Australia, Nazim's only too aware of what's at stake. Today is extremely important for the move because if she can't find a job that she's happy in, then that's the end of the move. We've arranged for Joanne to visit the Gold Coast University Hospital. She's met by Director of Nursing, Paul Newenhoven. Hi. Hi, Joe. Good to meet you. I'm Paul. It'll be a pleasure to show you around this facility. 
All's happy to give Joanne a tour, starting with the education suite. We do sim training from uh, neonatal right through to adults, including trauma. So it's a fantastic facility for both students and our staff alike. So. Oh, it seems a really good space, absolutely. She's impressed straight away. In the UK, we don't have this type of environment. We learn from work-based learning. So this, uh, this is a fantastic opportunity to gain further skills and knowledge in. Paul introduces Liz, a fellow intensive care nurse. Hey Joe, Hi, Joe. I'm Liz. So we've had a lot of trauma so far this morning. Okay. Um, helicopters, yeah. you know, our last helicopter was last night. It is a busy, busy place. I work in quite an old hospital, so it doesn't have all these modern facilities. The fact that's what is really exciting for me. It's kind yeah. of the work environment I want. So yep. this seems yeah. to fit. Yeah. That's what I need. So far, so good. Back to what I see, that's their tea room. So this is what um, a typical ICU room looks like in the pot. Impressed, Joanne's keen to find out about the kind of work-life balance she might have as a nurse in a hospital like this. It's a 38-hour week. The vast majority of our staff prefer to work 12-hour shift arrangement. And you're free to swap with colleagues, so if you've got something that comes up um, that's urgent, it's pretty flexible in terms of getting the shifts that you actually need for your work-life balance. Just what Joanne needed to hear. She's also keen to know if working here would enhance her career. We take you off for a short period of the year so we can upskill you, provide you with education and that also gives the opportunity for your managers to get to, to meet with you, to discuss your own professional development needs. That seems really fantastic. I'm absolutely, I'm so surprised at that. It's really good. Time now to talk money. So over here, as a, as a registered nurse, how much would I be making as a, as, as a nurse? A nurse in Queensland is probably the best paid nurse in the public sector in Australia. You would probably be starting on a salary in the order of about $82,000. But on top of that, you earn shift penalties, so you can add 20 to 25% on top of that. That's about £10,000 more than Joanne currently earns in the UK. Great news. So how would she go about getting a job in a hospital like this? For people like yourself who are well qualified in the critical care environment, it is very easy for you to slot into the Australian system. But looking at your qualification and your CV, uh, you're the sort of person that we're actually interested in in terms of employing. Excellent. If you were to uh, put an application on my desk tomorrow, I don't think there would be any difficulty in, in getting you employed here. I'm really happy. The fact that I can walk straight into a job is just fantastic. Knowing she could up her salary and skills and see more of her family in Australia has put Joanne's mind at ease. But as she chooses between work at home or away, will the day have done enough to put Nazim a step closer to the fresh start he's craving? I've had a really interesting day. Um, I've seen a wonderful hospital. There's lots of opportunities from here. And based on that, I'm going to vote for... Australia. I've just got a really good feel about this hospital, the opportunities are there for me to develop and also I think we're going to be really happy here. I think I'll be happy so therefore everybody else will be really happy. Time to share the good news with Nazim. How was your day? It was great, really, really enjoyed it. The hospital was brand new, it was, um, all the technology was brand new, it's really, really good. What's the salary going to be like here? The salary starts at about £43,000, up to about £53,000. That's really impressive. It is, that's, it's really good. That's about 10000 more than you currently honestly start in salary as well. Absolutely. So he says that if my CV went on his desk today, he'd probably give me the job, so that's good. I think that's really positive. I mean, I think I'm really happy, I mean, on the sound of it, it sounds like that you're happy, going to be happy here. Joanne's work prospects look great, but the biggest inspiration for the mongers moving down under is Nazim's desire to play a more active role in his family's life. Believing Australia's subtropical climate could help his health, a day out on the sunny Gold Coast should give everyone a taste of how their future might look. The family are spending their day at a wildlife park. First, they get up close and personal with a slippery character. Wow. Wow, look that at this. That looks beautiful, doesn't it? What is that dot? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like that. Sweet. Do you like the snake? <laughs> is it going to fall? It was saying hello. Katie's got concerns about the croc. Do you think he's asleep? No. What do you think he's doing then? Or maybe he's dead? No, I don't think he is. 
Wake up, crocodile. Say, wake up. Wake up. Days like today are few and far between back in the UK. Wallaby way. So we'll go this way. Yeah. So this is little Kiki. Keep her right with her tummy up like a baby. It's <laughs> <laughs> really cute. I seem to really like it here. It's really nice here. Kids are happy. I think if we moved here, we could actually spend quite a lot of time going to this park. Definitely. Being able to get out and about with Katie and Tom is a huge part of Nazine's dream, and time spent in the Aussie sunshine is already working wonders. I'm taking less painkillers already, so I've actually enjoyed it more today than I would in the UK, because if we come out for a couple of hours, I'm either having to put heat pack on because my back's really sore, or just going home early. Although she's had reservations about giving up their life in the UK, today's given Joanne time to reflect on how much moving really could help Nazim. It's a complete different change for him, because in the UK, all what he does is be in the house. I don't feel as much of a prisoner here, and that's only in a short space of a week. He's been putting the laundry on, he's been sort of filling the dishwasher. He wouldn't do things like that in the UK. What's it going to be like in a month's time? That's what I keep thinking, and what's going to happen in three months' time? When we got married, I wasn't like this. I hate my life. I hate the way I am. That's not the person I want to be. I know moving here is not going to fix everything, but certainly it can go a long way. Even if his health's improved by 20%, it's just, it's just massive. It really is. It's been an inspiring day for the family. So will it be a done deal when it comes to choosing between lifestyle in the UK and Australia? So we've had a really great day at the wildlife park here today, so now it's time to vote. Why did you choose? You don't know? Because they're both best places. I voted Australia because it's really, it's really amazing over here. Um, we've had a really, really wonderful day here. We haven't had the weather to contend with. It's just been amazing. It's been really great because I've just wanted to get out and about with the kids, which is what they've wanted us to do and been able to do it here. In spite of Katie's indecision, Joanne's feeling more confident about a life in Australia, meaning Nazim could be within touching distance of the active, healthier life he yearns for. But will the finances see his hopes dashed? The couple now need to work out if they could afford to live down under. They think their house back in the UK is worth £180,000. To see if the valuation's accurate, we sent round two local estate agents. Good family space, nice open plan. Um, could do moving the toys, but yeah, it's a good room. Don't agree with the toys. Nice, nice open plan kitchen. So here we are in the master bedroom. Clearly, I would be advising the, the, the vendors of this property to dress it up, get rid of some of the toiletries. It feels so homely. <laughs> in today's market, I would value this property at £220,000, uh, at quick sale price of £210,000. Wow. <laughs> in the current market, I would value this property at £225,000. For a quick sale, £215,000. That's more than I thought. To get like 40,000 more than what you're expecting, it's, it's a lovely shop to get. It's a nice bonus. I'm well happy now. The increase in value is encouraging, but how would the Munger's cost of living in Australia compare to the UK? We've prepared a comparison of expenses, starting with the grocery shop. Let's have a look. Gosh, look at the price of mushrooms. That's our favourite food. Garlic puree. We seem to use tons of that, yeah. so it's like eight tubes a month, I think, yeah. we use. <laughs> Save a fortune here. Fresh pasta, that as well, that's, that's one of our staple foods as well. That's more expensive. There's a lot of more expensive products here. A monthly food shop in Australia would cost around £130 more than the UK. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if we can afford that. That's a good question. Can we afford it? I'm scared. This is such a lot of money. And that's just the grocery bill. What about the bigger outgoings? Basing their calculations on the dream house, 
The couple's mortgage in Australia would be £200 more per month. And that's not the only thing going up down under. Gosh, all these bills seem to be more. I mean, gas and electricity is like double. Adding up the figures reveals they would be over £1,000 worse off every month in Australia. That's extortionate. It looks like Nazim's dream could be in trouble. I wouldn't be able to afford to live here at those prices. But Joanne could see a potential healthy boost to her income in Australia. £722 more. That's, that's like, wow, that's, like, amazing. It is a huge increase, but is it enough? Australia income versus Australia outgoings is minus £35.91. So, overall, we're going to be minus £322.75 worse off. OK, that's quite a big shock. Not happy. Not happy at all. The outcome's not what the couple were hoping for, but the sums are based on Joanne's basic salary. They said I could potentially make up to 25% more for unsociable hours. So virtually we are 25% on top of that and we must break in even then. Fighting to keep his dream alive, Nazim points out the extra money from the sale of their house in the UK could reduce their mortgage down under and spots another possible saving in Tom's nursery costs. We're potentially like a year away from moving, yeah. so by that time the, that nursery cost wouldn't be there. Yeah. So that negative... That would be a saving of £500, £500 a month. £500. Pound. So off. then you're straight into a positive. Yeah. So you will be better off straight away for Australia. Nazim's trying to remain optimistic, but when it comes to the vote, will his prognosis persuade Joanne to take the plunge? We've been looking at finances today and it's definitely been an eye-opening experience and based on that we're going to vote. UK. Australia. I chose the UK um, purely because I think the pressure would be too much. I understand what you're trying to say, and yes, it is quite a big lot more pressure. Although it doesn't look the best now, there is definitely light at the end of the tunnel in terms of things we can change. I don't think I'm in a happy place right now. I think it's just sort of, we've been shown the best parts of Australia, I've seen the jobs, I've seen everything, and now, down to finances, it's just, I just feel really disappointed. Joanne's financial fears means Nazim's hopes of a better future in Australia could be on shifting sand. And there's one more hurdle to overcome. Leaving behind family and friends who have supported them over the years will be a tough call. While the children are looked after by a childminder, the couple sit down to watch messages from home. Right, should we do this? OK. Hi, Nazim, Joanne. Hi, yeah. Hi, Naz. Hi, Joe. Hello, Joanne and Naz. Naz is a really nice, friendly guy. He likes to get involved and wants to be part of it all, doesn't he? Yeah. Jojo is a very nice um, daughter-in-law. She's like a daughter to me. When they're together, they're a happy family. They do everything together. They're just going through life as it comes, and that's... <laughs> What can you do? Naz and Joanne have been through the mill, but I think it's brought them closer together. As much as we would miss, miss them all. And if it's the right choice for them, then we'd embrace it and tell her to go for it, definitely. It's extremely difficult um, to imagine life over here without them. If they make the decision to go, it'll be very hard. Unfortunately, you've now got a rather big decision to make. And all I can say is, think carefully and go with your heart. Love is what you make. And if you go with the interest of being, making a go of it, you, you'll do well. Your dad and I wish you um, a long and happy life together over there. If you decide to make Australia your home, we are going to miss you. That was 
it's really hard. Yeah, I'm starting now. I think that's the hardest thing about coming over here. It'll be saying goodbye to the friends and the family. It's harder to make a decision now than it was before seeing an hour ago, yeah. yeah. One week ago, the Mungas arrived in Australia, hoping it could transform their family life. But while Nazim has felt health benefits from being down under, messages from home have provided a heartbreaking reminder of the loved ones they'd be leaving behind. As the family's final vote approaches, where their future lies looks far from certain. The trial week has shown the couple how Australia could make a real difference to their lives. I'm feeling better in myself. I'm feeling more upbeat. It means well to me to be able to say yes to the kids rather than having to say no all the time to them. I've absolutely loved seeing Nazim flourish this week. His mood is dramatically changed. He's upbeat, he's positive. I've been like this for so long and I've had these health issues for so long and thinking about what I could be like is just like not even real. But although moving down under could help transform the family's future, Joanne realises it would come at a huge cost. Just seeing everybody crying and upset, the, fact, the thought of us leaving, it just tears me up inside, really. I don't know if I could do it right now. Um, I'm just all in turmoil inside, really. Without Joanne on board, Nazim's dream could come to nothing. She's the one that's making this move work, and she's the one going to work every day, so it's quite hard to put that pressure on her. I've seen how much positive there is out in Australia with my health and well-being, and I don't really want to go back to the UK. If she's not entirely happy, then we can't move. So, with their destiny dependent on the final turn of the cards, where does the family's future lie? This week has given us a brilliant lifestyle. It's shown us what we can actually do out here. We came out to Australia knowing we had to tick two boxes. Basically, it'll improve my health and it'll create a better work-life balance. And it's ticked both, both, both boxes. I love the beach and the sun. Do you like the playgrounds? Yeah. I think we should just like apply now, basically. We're just yeah. like, what's the point in waiting? That's how I feel as well. <laughs> It's been an unforgettable week for the Mungers. Despite an element of financial risk, seeing how their family's life could be transformed down under has convinced everyone Australia should be their new home. With any luck, it won't be long before Nazim's back enjoying the benefits of being in a warmer climate. We wish the family all the best with their new life on the other side of the world. Escaping the British climate could dramatically improve your health. You'd hardly think twice about leaving. But when your partner's worked hard to build a life for your family in the UK, how do you persuade them it's worth risking everything to move to a country you've never even been to on the other side of the world? Two near-death experiences have cheated Nazim Munger of the life he once knew. He can no longer work, um, he no longer drives. Most days it's the same four walls, day in, day out. Missing out on family life, he's convinced relocating down under could help him become the dad he's desperate to be. The dream for me is that we'll move out to Australia and I'll get substantially better. While a trial week in the country does work wonders... It's a complete different change for him, cos in the UK, all what he does is be in the house. Will the financial cost of a move mean the dream's over before it's begun? That's quite a big shock. Not happy. 
not happy at all. Home to no fewer than 200 nationalities, Australia boasts a vibrant multicultural society. And with the promise of an easy-going outdoor lifestyle, it's no wonder the country remains an irresistible pull for Brits, seeking a better life down under. Not everyone stays for good, however. Almost half of those who emigrate end up returning home. A horrific car crash eight years ago left Nazim Munga a shadow of the parent and partner he wants to be. Now, despite never having been, he believes Australia's warmer climate could turn his life around. The coming week will be a chance to find out if Nazim's grand plan is simply a pipe dream or if moving to the southern hemisphere really could give the Mungas the normal family life they crave. To get from Manchester to Brisbane, the Mungas have spent a gruelling 22 and a half hours on a plane. When they finally arrive for the first time, the distance from the UK has hit home with Joanne. My biggest concern is um, family coming to see us, my parents especially. They're not used to doing long haul flights and I think um, they would really struggle with it. The long journey's given Nazim plenty of thinking time. Quite a bit apprehensive to sort of find out where we're going to be in the future. Hopefully, Australia will meet all our expectations and this will be where we sort of settle down as a family. There's a lot hanging in the balance in the week ahead. It's got to massively deliver for me. I'm the one that needs convincing. Yeah. I want to have the nice house, I want to be in the nice area, and I want the right job as well. Which really hard to where I've got to in the UK so far. It's got to deliver, definitely. Otherwise, I'm not going to come at all. Joanne set the bar high. The next seven days will have to impress if Nazim's to get the fresh start he desperately wants. Meet the Munger family. Dad Nazim, Mum Joanne, five-year-old Katie and Tom, who's three. They live just outside Leeds in West Yorkshire. Nazim and Joanne tied the knot nine years ago, but just one year later, their lives were thrown into turmoil. I was on a night shift at work and Nazim was at home and I got a phone call to say that he was in A&E because we'd had a house fire. An electrical fault had set the house ablaze with Nazim inside. Talking about it now, I can feel the heat on my skin. Apparently the flames were literally chasing him out of the door. I could have died in it. It was a devastating time for the couple and things were about to get much worse when two weeks later, Nazim was involved in a near fatal car accident. I was stationary at some red lights and a very large car hit me from behind at speed. Fighting for his life, Nazim had to be cut from the car. When I went to a &E, 